Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our live Q&A session, How to Leverage Your Existing Healthcare Fax System During COVID-19. My name is John Lane, and I've been with Biscom for over 25 years now, working directly with our customers on implementations, configurations, and consultations. And I'll be your moderator for today's event. A little bit about Biscom before we start. Every day, millions of users at over 6,000 companies send and receive faxes and secure file deliveries through our system reliably and securely. Our goal today is to share some of that expertise we've gained over the last 34 years in the fax and file delivery space in order to help you maximize your investment in your current systems. Now I'd like to have today's panel introduce themselves. And we'll start with our CEO, Bill Ho. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, I'm really excited to be on the panel. I think this is a really cool idea just to uh, you know, provide the, the expertise that we have locked into this, you know, in our, in our employees and our company. Um, so I'm really excited to share that, uh, you know, our, our knowledge with you. Hi, good afternoon. This is Antoinette Carboni. I've been with BizCom 20 plus years, um, working primarily in the healthcare space, helping customers implement secure document delivery solutions. I'm really excited to be here and talk more about the happenings with COVID-19 in healthcare. And I'm Larry Grant, the Director of Sales Engineering. I've been here for about 16 years and I'm looking forward to working with you. As, can you, as you can tell, there's a lot of experience on this panel that we have today. Okay, let's get to the questions. We're gonna start with questions that were submitted through the registration process and through emails ahead of time. And we're gonna start taking your questions as they come in through the panel, either through the Q&A portion of Zoom, or if you wanna to talk to our panel live, raise your hand, we'll introduce you and unmute you so that you can ask a question directly to the panel. And feel free to ask that questions, follow up questions at any time, go ahead and get them in and keep them coming. And as a final reminder, the webinar is being recorded today and all attendees will receive a recording of the event when it's incomplete. Now for the first question. We have a question that had come in ahead of time, looking to learn about the unknown. What should I know about implementing facts in healthcare? Well, uh, facts is pretty ubiquitous in healthcare already. Um, I think one of the things that people, uh, you know, think about in terms of communication in, in, in healthcare is just, you know, is it, is it easy? Um, is it interoperable? Can I, can I really, communicate and share information with all these different health IT systems. And fax is actually one of the um, uh, key ways of communicating. So yeah, that, that to me, um, it, it's really important, I think, when you do an implementation in healthcare to think about, um, you know, how easy is it to, to use and, and to, um, you know, is it, is it really seamless, I guess, because, you know, at the end of the day, the providers out there who are working and trying to treat patients. I mean, that's what's most important to them. And I think they just don't want to be, you know, burdened or uh, deal with any kind of technology that's going to, you know, slow them down. So that, that's the main thing is just make it easy and make it seamless. Yeah, and let me add to that too. Fax is a critical component. So it's really the back end for all the major healthcare systems. For example, like in Epic, um, user adoptability is across the board. But what I always like to mention is what we're actually sending. Um, so some of those healthcare platforms are sending heart transplants or major, you know, um, operations like a hip replacement, a knee replacement. So the data going through is critical. Um, we're also dealing with a lot of insurance claims. So everything does need to be locked down secure. Um, and it is a technology that is a growing technology. And every healthcare organization does have that as part of their project plan and implementation is facts and secure document delivery. Those are excellent points. Another thing that uh, you can do to find out some of that unknown, do some surveys with your users and your departments to find out how they're using facts and go and watch them to see what they're doing. That'll help you get some more insight into what you're doing today in your environment. And then you can leverage it a little bit better. I think, uh, yeah, I think to that point, John, uh, people are very surprised that um, how people use it and actually what they what they do with their faxes system. So, yeah, Larry, Larry and I have seen that. Larry and I have seen that live out at customer sites where, you know, the administrator is shocked that someone, you know, picks up a piece of paper after they print it out and scan it right back in to fax it out. So it's, 
it is. It's a great way to find more information you don't know about. So the next uh, question they had gotten in ahead of time, they, there's two together because they're very related. How to leverage current setup to fully support work from home? And uh, probably one of my favorite ones that came in, we sent our employees home to work because of the pandemic, and now they no longer have access to their fax machine. Help. <laughs> Those are great questions. So, you know, to answer the first, the expandability is really straightforward. It happens in real time. If it's an on-premise solution, we can expand the number of channels on the back end um, within hours a day. Um, what we have been seeing with our customers, especially on the enterprise, we've been scaling through our cloud service. So because the front end software is identical, the same, we're able to get them on the cloud in real time within an hour. And all that additional throughput is going through our cloud service. Um, to answer the second, um, it's seamless. Um, once they're implemented, those users are working from home, they're on the same network, they're able to have access to various clients. So if it's either through email, a separate desktop or a web client, it gives them all the functionality and the user adoptability seamless again. So just like they print anything, they'll be able to fax, they'll be able to attach multiple documents in a single fax um, send off, really easy. And the thing is, as Antonetta mentioned, it's seamless. If you have our system already, it's very easy to expand it and just to implement or expand your current workflows. Uh, those workflows might include our email to fax solution or desktop client or web client. Uh, we've had many customers who have gone through this uh, due to COVID and all their employees working from home now. And most of them went the email to fax route, either sending and receiving through email. Uh, it was seamless and it was easy to implement, very quick as well. Yeah, and all, and all really, you're, you're maybe porting a few numbers, right? I mean, that's, and that's really easy. So. Another thing that, uh, and this goes into a follow-up question that uh, someone had, is you can use your phone, right, to take a picture and scan a document in. Because a lot of times people, even at home, still might have paper that they've printed out and need to use, and they can take a picture and either send it through email, as Larry said, or use one of our, um, our mobile apps to do it. And uh, we kind of talked about it, but if we could just uh, talk about it just a little bit more. We've experienced an increase in fax traffic due to COVID. How do I expand? Again, let's touch upon that. So you can expand, like I said earlier, through an increase within your on-premise servers. But what we're seeing is people coming onto the cloud. Um, we do that today in our type of design work. So it's either HADR to systems on site, load balancing, but they're using our cloud as business continuity. And with COVID-19, because of the increase, because of the lab results that are coming through in this healthcare, you know, organizations we work with primarily, we are seeing a lot of them using our cloud service and they're up and running within minutes. And oftentimes just to expand the on-premise fax server, it's just usually a license increase license change it's usually pretty quick and easy to implement one of the one of the benefits kind of Anton is touching on is the um you know when you go to the cloud you you all of a sudden now have a, a ton more capacity um you know if you have to blast something out it, you know you've got the ports available without having to buy them and uh you know you're, you're never going to get a busy signal with our service so we got some of our first questions coming in live during the webcast here uh, and there's two, and these uh, that are very related from the same person, I'm sure they'll follow up and clarification, but is there a way to fax multiple attachments without sending them individually? <laughs> and as a follow up to that, when we send multiple faxes from patient records, is there a way we can only get one confirmation for the group instead of all the individual confirmations? Probably take the first part of that. How do they send multiple fax attachments at one time? Oh, there's different ways to do it. Uh, using the print to fax functionality um, will work with any of our clients. Um, they could just literally copy and paste the, the attachments into the document, into the client as well. And they can even use the add to list functionality, uh, which is an add to list printer driver. So you can add multiple attachments to a single outbound fax easily. It's kind of follow up to the second part. When using our clients to send out a broadcast, the summary in the client, in our web client or desktop client, you can see the summary as a whole. You can see, you know, if you sent 20 faxes to 20 different people, 
It's all one broadcast. You can see just that summary that 18 went through fine and two didn't. You can resend them all at the same time if you want, uh, or you can then dive in and expand it and to see each individual status coming back. Uh, another question uh, that came in live, is fax now reliable in IP networks, T.38? I know fax technology has been fully tested in TDM infrastructure, but I know I am finding the solution is having a hard time with our FOIP provider. Well, uh, it, SIP and T.38 have come a long way uh, over the last five years in particular. Uh, there are certain SIP providers that do faxing better, and our support team will also work with you to help tweak your settings and work with your provider to hopefully improve your uh, fax signal. Yeah, and I've seen myself as well, Larry, too, a lot more reliability coming from our customers talking about T.38 and fax over IP. The providers, the telco providers, as well as the uh, equipment providers are doing a lot better job of supporting it. Uh, I mean, what would you say, uh, John and Larry, about, you know, just over the last few years? I mean, I remember years ago, it was, uh, you know, people were having a lot of problems with, you know, um, jitter and lag and other things that aren't, you know, that, that fax doesn't like. So, I don't know, what would you say is, is some of the, you know, how, how has it improved over the years? Oh, it's definitely improved. Um, each version of the fax server, or each version of the uh, SDK for the um, um, fax over IP, there are improvements to overall performance. Uh, error rates have gone down. Um, again, we could probably work with the individual uh, customer and provider if they're still having some problems. But definitely overall, there has been an improvement in the SIP and fax. Mm -hmm. And uh, the telco networks, uh, the IP that's coming on, have become more clean, more reliable, uh, with less issues than, than you've seen in the past. And those providers know how to deal with them now when there is a problem presented. Absolutely. And those enterprise accounts, the Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 organization, fax is mission critical. So they've pushed through the years on those providers to make sure that everything did get more seamless with, with fax over IP in general. So. It's, it's something we see, it's a trend. Um, most, 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 you know, enterprises are sticking with it for the moment. Yep. And I'm gonna loop back uh, to the previous question just to clarify as a clarifying question came in. Um, the desktop client uh, that we're talking about is available both in the cloud as well as the on-prem solution. Um, both, uh, I shouldn't say both, but uh, SMTP, a web client and a desktop client available in all forms uh, that we deliver. Okay, another question that just came in. Uh, if you're providing this as a cloud service, you provide the teleco telecom support, correct? Yes, absolutely. What we're hosting are the fax servers and the telecom. There might still be a component on-premise called FASTCOM Suite uh, that will integrate with your network, provide you with all your uh, access rights and your security. Yeah, that's one of the best parts of going to the cloud. You don't have to deal with any of those telecom issues anymore. <laughs> and yeah, the, the FASTCOM suite portion isn't needed for everybody, right? That depends on the variation, what you're looking for. You can do simple web client and email to fax without anything. Um, but the, the other portion is optional for some of those other integrations um, that people sometimes need and want. Yeah, workflows, uh, a lot of the analytics, right? Those are the things that you, you kind of get out of the the more advanced uh, um, capabilities that come with the suite software. So let's talk about the next question. More information they're looking for on ways to support remote users while still being HIPAA compliant. Well, working remotely does not mean you're violating HIPAA. Um, mm. If they're using, say, our desktop client or web client, uh, they're normally VPNed into their uh, own network. Um, so th this shouldn't in any way violate HIPAA. Uh, email to fax, it is an email coming from the user through your email system to our fax solution, which converts it into a fax. So again, not HIPAA, uh, not violating HIPAA at all. 
and the solution overall exists within your network, like our desktop client, our web clients, um, all that are talking to servers within your network. So that again is not violating anything with HIPAA. It's all still within your network using your network security. And what we're finding as well with the COVID-19 happening and a lot of remote workers is organizations are finding that they were not following stringent HIPAA compliance with standalone fax machines for those users. Mm -hmm. So now they have the ability, they're remote, they're using the Viscom desktop client or the email client or the web, and now they're all falling under HIPAA regulations and all those documents are being stored either locally or, or anywhere that the organization is storing those documents and they're able to also track any inbound and outbound documents. So a lot more analytics they're finding and they're locking down all that information. That's a really interesting point, Antonin, especially now they, they used to do it all by hand. Now it's actually auditable and trackable where in the past, you know, you didn't know what they were saying, sending per se, and you could do archiving and doing reporting. That's that's fantastic. That's a must. So uh, let's talk about uh, with the question coming in integration with Office 365 in the cloud. All right. So we do support Office 365. Um, there is no issue with that. We've supported it for several years now. Uh, Exchange 365 uh, connecting into your Outlook. Our Outlook client still works the same way. There is some configuration that has to take place in Office 365 for it to work. Uh, and we do have a full write-up on how to do it, and our support team can work with you on it. Excellent. That's really important now with everybody using more and more cloud apps and kind of sure. using them together rather than just a standalone like they used to. Yep. Is the cloud uh, solution multi-tenant? How is the data secured in the cloud? Um, easy answer on that. Yes, it's multi-tenant. All the, the data is kept segregated. We, we follow all the normal standard um, security protocols that you, ex you would expect. Uh, we, we have an SSA E18 as well as a SOC 2 audit every year that we're more than happy to share the results with our customers. They can see what we're doing. And we do things such as encryption at rest and, you know, TLS with the inbound email messages as well as, you know, SSL using TLS 1.2 and above throughout the solution. Yeah, plus, John, I think we've been doing it for 15 years now, over 15 years. So I think we've, uh, you know, we've gotten pretty used to, to supporting our data centers and, and our uh, cloud users. That's a great point. And I know our CISO is top notch. <laughs> uh, next question, as we move on from that one, do you have an API integration with Cerner? If so, can you talk about it a little bit? I know people in your team have been uh, doing some of that stuff, Larry. Uh, we do have a new API with, um, um, well, with Cerner, actually, I'm sorry. It, it's uh, the Fire APIs. What? The Fire APIs, Larry, right? So I think, yeah, we're, um, you know, we have a bunch of integrations, of course, uh, Centricity, Virence, and uh, is, is one we've had for a long time. Um, and uh, the Epic integration, that's, I know we, we do a lot of uh, work with uh, people who use Epic, but Cerner, Cerner is kind of new. Um, we're actually leveraging the Fire APIs. And uh, one of the cool things about it is um, we can start, we're, we're able to inject data and patient information directly into the patient record. So um, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. And since we're talking about uh, Cerner, let's talk a little bit more about EMRs as one of the questions that had come in ahead of time from the registrants was, what EMR and EHR systems does BizCom integrate with? Well, if you listen to me, John, I had just mentioned that, so. Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> well, let me, let me point this out, though. Um, so, uh, Centricity, which is now Verence, that was, you know, we've been integrated with that for 20 years. In fact, we're the, the only certified fax vendor for, um, for that system. And uh, Epic is, is uh, actually a company we've been working pretty closely with. And one of the cool things is our software is built into their platform. So if you have Epic installed, you have the BizCom integration right in there. And, um, and one of the things that's, that's nice about our integration is it actually goes beyond what most other integrations do and gives us the ability to extract metadata and send that along and share that. So it really has, we're able to, um, send way more data than you would typically just get from the actual uh, document itself. Um, we understand like who the patient is, who the doctor is, who the, what department they're in. 
um, all the forms. Larry's done many, plenty of integrations with that actually. And um, uh, or maybe Larry, if you want to talk about some of the details around that. It's pretty interesting, I think. Well, the direct integration with Epic has been um, a huge success. Uh, many, many customers are, have already uh, converted over to it. It's an enhanced integration where we're getting past medical record information, patient name, doctor name, recipient name, medical record number, Epic job ID, Epic date and time. The whole benefit to us getting past this data is that it is now searchable. It, it is now auditable. Um, this is information you can find using one of our clients uh, to more easily find a sent fax, more easily resend a, a sent fax. And of course, every time, every time we send a fax, we always send the status back into Epic using the uh, Epic web service. So it, it's a tight integration for both outbound faxing and sending the status back. Excellent. And some follow-up questions on EHRs. Uh, does BISCOM allow for the backup of faxes in the event that there's a communication error between our EHR system and fax server? And more specifically, can they separate directories where they can store faxes for approximately 30 days? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the workflow is yours. Uh, we could send multiple copies of receive fax in. Uh, if you're using our desktop and web client, you have the ability to set your retention uh, for uh, how long you want to keep the fax data for. And archiving is always an option. You can always send a, a separate copy off to a network share, to uh, a printer, email, just wherever you need that fax to go. All right, let's hop over to some more of the, the live questions coming in. We've got some great ones. Are there any MFDs you cannot interface with? Anything that's not network enabled. Excellent answer, Larry. Talk a little bit more about that. What do you mean sure. by that? So if the uh, MFP, MFD is uh, network enabled uh, and has an email functionality, you always can send out a fax via the e uh, email to fax protocol. And that's just a matter of scanning a document in and send it to an email address of fax number at your fax domain. And the fax domain is just an arbitrary name, you assign it. It's just a way of routing that email across your network over to our FASCOM suite where we convert it from email to fax and send it out. And just to share some of the experiences at BizCom, I think 80% of our customers use that functionality versus using a direct connector from, you know, example, Xerox or Rico. Um, most of our customers do go the SMTP route. Yeah, it is a heck of a lot easier. You don't have to configure anything on all the devices. You just, uh, you know, say, hey, as Larry and Antonina said, number at fax, right? It's pretty and the real benefit to Yeah, the real benefit to that is, well, how many uh, places have established uh, MFD models? There's usually a plethora <laughs> of different brands, and you'd yeah. have to get a client for every one. No, it's just so easy. Standardize on email to fax. Yeah, they do always seem to be, you know, changing over between contracts. As soon as they're done with the first batch, here's the new batch coming in. Yep. That's very interesting, Larry. Yeah, um, okay. Let me just put a counterpoint there, which is um, some of the, the direct integrations, like if there's an actual app or something running. These days, you know, net, the, people are, are building these MFDs with, you know, operate, full operating systems on there. So, you know, some of our apps that run on them directly actually have a little bit more functionality, right? So that's, that's one of the cool point. things. But, you know, I think the in general, yeah, is definitely just add some complexity to supporting it and make and maintaining it. But I think, uh, you know, for those who need that additional cap those additional capabilities, um, it, it might be, you know, nice to have the app running. Absolutely. Yeah, I know that's a great kind of point. And that's actually kind of follows a question that just came, came popped in. I know a lot of MFDs are now including direct connectivity to faxing engines. And that's true. That's some of the things where they, they built it in or we've built it in. Um, we have integration with you name it. You know, HP especially, we've got a great integration with mm -hmm. um, Sharp and other ones as well, Lexmark, that, uh, yeah, that kind of activity is there. And, you know, some of them even, you can just walk up and configure the device to automatically do the at domain part for you. Yeah. Uh, well, talk I mean, about, the, go John, ahead, can, I just, can I just point something out there too, which is, sure. I mean, one of the cool things I think about, you know, this, this connect, direct connection to basically our cloud service in the back end is you don't need to buy a fax card anymore. Right? There's no hardware that you need to buy, which can be pretty expensive. And then the analog line that you're, you're maintaining for that 
um, MFD that that's you know 50 60 bucks a month per line and uh, and phone companies are trying to get rid of get rid of them so you know that it really you just it's starting to become really hard to support that you know from a customer perspective um, so you know if you still need a fax you know, I think our solution really gives you that flexibility and you know a ton of um, uh, advantages over kind of doing it the old-fashioned way great um, do you guys have a mobile app? This a question coming in. Sure we do, uh, for Android and iOS. Yep, okay. and our transit product, uh, you know, which is kind of something we're, we're, a lot of people may not know about, actually, you know, runs as a, um, on any mobile browser, and it's, uh, you know, built to be responsive, and, you know, you actually don't need an app even to run it. So what do you mean by transit, Bill? Uh, let everybody know. I'll give you a chance to do 30 seconds on it. Yeah, transits are a uh, cloud-based secure file transfer solution, and uh, it's really easy to use. In fact, it's one of the ways that we look at, you know, how, few, how fax is kind of migrating to electronic delivery. Um, it's, a, it's a solution that we've developed over many years. and uh, um, it's, It complements our on-prem version. Uh, this is fully cloud, but you know, it's really designed to be uh, super easy to use, secure, and, uh, and very scalable. So another question, how do we automatically distribute the faxes to teams, inbound faxes, I assume? Well, there's different methods of doing it. Most of it's done based on fax number routing, and we can send it to a network share, we can send it to a shared inbox and email, uh, we can send it to a distribution list, uh, essentially, if you need it to go somewhere, we usually have a way of getting it there. Absolutely. And if we want to further streamline a lot of um, workflows, which we do for enterprise organizations, um, even smaller ones, we have a tool called Advanced Facts Routing, which is a rules-based engine. You can do OCRing of the document. You can do a barcode swipe. Um, so there, there's really a built-in higher level than just DID. So we can do whatever you need on those inbound faxes. Is there a more efficient way to fax attachments? Now we talked about the inbound side. How about the outbound side? More efficient way of doing it. Um, well, there's methods for using our printer drivers, uh, which actually does the conversion from Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever, to a TIFF image. And it can be attached to an email or to one of our desktop clients. Um, what about Docflow, Larry? I was literally going to dive into our APIs. We have different APIs. Um, the new uh, web services REST API uh, as a way of delivering outbound faxes, uh, including also Docflow. Docflow is an API that allows us to take legacy systems and convert them over to Faxcom. Uh, Docflow is our tool for converting any outbound application into a faxable, well, into faxable content for us to send out. Yeah. And, and I think every workflow can be different and unique. So to answer that, yeah, there's definitely many ways. And then we actually dive in and we'll find what is the best way for that certain workflow organization. And there was a follow-up question on the question before, in the cloud, you would manage the users, correct? So yeah, when using the, the pure cloud SaaS solution with just the web client or SMTP, you, you create the users in the cloud, you do the routing and inbound, whether it's to an individual user or to a group right within the cloud application or portal. Um, COVID has put a spotlight on how critical fax is in our business. How do I keep it up and running? Well, let us do it. <laughs> no, let us do it, All right. Exactly, um, go ahead, Larry. Well, I was going to say there, there's different methods for doing that. Uh, building a, a very highly available, uh, resilient fax environment is a, a good idea. We're, we do that for most of our hospitals um, and most of our larger uh, implementations. It's all about resilience and high availability, uh, making sure everything is as redundant as possible. The whole idea is if you lose a server or a path, that other path or server would continue to function and you should not see an interruption in your service. 
Exactly. And then another method is, is actually also offering that business continuity method that we have where you can have two servers, HADR, and a third layer to our BizCom Cloud or have one server and then your DR strategy is the BizCom Cloud. So we can do it whichever way is best for the customer. But what we also do is dive into what their HA and DR strategy is for the whole organization. And we piggyback off that strategy. So how do you identify the number of ports in inbound faxing with SR140 and do some reporting and statistics on it? Uh, reporting, uh, we have job tracking for sending, receiving of faxes. We could do reporting on that. Uh, we also have enterprise fax management, a real-time monitoring, real-time alarming tool um, that allows us to track in real-time and alert on in real-time of any violations to uh, uh, metrics we've set in place. Exactly, and just to expound a little bit more on EFM, because I think it's an important tool nowadays, specifically with COVID happening, it's been a real highlighted conversation. Um, managers, higher level CIO CISOs want more analytics on all the TX and RSs that are going through the, either the inbound servers or through the cloud. Um, it also gives admins the ability to have different admin rights as they log in, make changes to the environment. But the way I like to talk about it is like it's a health check of your FaxCon ecosystem. So if you're going to the doctor and getting a physical, it's the same thing. It's a physical on your fax server environment. And that's something, you know, we don't have time to show it here today because someone was asking to see that just as that's coming in. Uh, but we can set up a demo at any time uh, if you want to see the, the EFM and the dashboard portion specifically. Um, another question, we are nationwide and the server is hosted in one place. My question is, do I need a spin up mailbox service for each location to reflect the time zone? I'm being asked because the report when sending from Outlet is shown three hours behind. So the, the challenge, especially with our client, uh, actually with email can be that because they're all coming in from one location. Um, but when using the desktop application, it's gonna reflect the time of the client that you're sending from and the time zone that it's in. Is there anything to follow up on that, Larry, that you've run into? I'm just trying to think that one through. It, it was a good answer, John. Um, when I'm not really, uh, there are time date stamps on the actual faxes of when they get received and when they get sent. Um, no, I think you covered it. Yeah, and on the inbound side, we do stamp it with not only the time on the fax, if you have that option on, we can also stamp it with the time zone. So at any time, everybody knows where it is and when it came in. That helps with the legality of the document. So what's the long-term role of fax in healthcare? We want to get off fax, but just can't. Can you help us understand the landscape? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think fax is, uh, you know, has been and will be in healthcare for a really long time. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's ubiquitous. Um, it's, really, it's, it's essentially built into almost every single health IT system out there. And, um, you know, when, when you're, you know, one thing is, is with all the, with the advent of EMRs, you know, that communication um, within a health system, pretty easy, right? But when you are trying to communicate um, with, with organizations outside your, your health organization, your health system, it's really, you know, it can be really difficult, right? If you're not in the same system, um, a lot of smaller doctor, doctor's offices only use fax. So fax becomes kind of that interoperability layer that, you know, ties everything together and it's pretty seamless, it's pretty easy. So, you know, I think fax is actually gonna be in healthcare for a really, really long time. Um, and I think, you know, there's kind of that, that uh, uh, negative connotation with fax because it just has this, this sound of, of legacy. But um, fax today is not the same as it used to be. Um, fax is just, you know, I think of it as just as a protocol and, um, and that protocol is, is widely used. It's extremely reliable. And, um, and, and every system, every healthcare system and doctor's office knows how to send and receive it. So it really is an ideal, um, ideal way to communicate. Yeah, and, and I see it as a growing business. I think it's gonna 
continue to grow and grow and grow. I think there's so many driving forces. I don't think there's any other technology that can deliver exactly what the facts can. And I think that the powerhouses like Epic are driving a lot of that as well in healthcare. Um, but I think also just the analytics and the security, the HIPAA, the PHI, the PCI, everything around it is crucial in all these implementations. And there's no other technology that can really deliver what FACTS is delivering today for these healthcare organizations. Can you talk about a client who needed to scale quickly and what they did to keep up with the demand? Are there any lessons learned? Um, well, we've had many customers lately have had to scale off quickly. Um, more often than not, they went the email to fax route uh, because the email system was already in place. Uh, all they really had to do was assign users fax numbers and uh, we can route that receive fax right to the user or again to a shared mailbox. Um, lessons learned would be uh, ultimately get off the fax machine uh, anyway, uh, move over to a digital solution for the auditability, for the digital copy that can be stored and backed up. Um, second lesson would be uh, send receive faxes to uh, sh uh, shared mailboxes. So it's not going to necessarily to an individual, but rather to like a team mailbox or department mailbox. Absolutely, and to add on that, what I'm hearing from many customers is that as they're finding all these standalone fax machines and they're automating, they're finding also a lot of lost faxes, where at times, you know, they were researching where they were going, now they're finding them being in an automated process with a FastCom solution, they're able to track everything. But with healthcare, there's also a rating system, the bottom line financials as well, every transaction you know, affects the revenue of a hospital or a healthcare organization. So every fax is crucial to be received or sent and in a timely manner. There can be no delay in these documents and they need to be locked down and secured. I, th I think one thing too um, that people will find, so so think about all these, all of our customers who have actually moved to, you know, this digital fax, have gotten rid of their fax machines or just don't can't access them, right? you'll be surprised at how much money you're actually going to save. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a great story, a case study um, that uh, they say this one, this one hospital saved $200,000 a year in paper alone because they didn't have to print them out anymore. Um, yeah. I was actually pretty surprised at that, that level, but I guess paper is pretty expensive and, <laughs> you know, toner cons consumables. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think these companies that, that have been, that are moving to, you know, are, are uh, you know moving people off the physical fax machine are going to see some pretty significant uh, cost cutting too. And in addition to that, Bill, a lot of these customers that we've talked to about this, every time they start looking for fax machines in their environment, they always find another five, six, ten on the floor. It, <laughs> we have we've had hospital systems five that have something like five thousand fax machines within their environment. All five thousand have to be supported, maintained, toner, paper. I wasn't too surprised that the year they were saving 200000 It's probably more in other places. Yeah, and this was not a big hospital either. Yeah. So. No, and I think it's funny when we are on the line, and Larry, they'll say that they find them locked in closets before yep. HIPAA. They're locked in an area, and they're double keyed. I, I mean, the, the, yeah. excuse me here. So it's, it's entertaining on some level, but we're here to help them and get off that and get under HIPAA and, and really automate the whole process. Right. So uh, you said switching from on-prem to the cloud can be done quickly, but what is the cost to switch? That's a great question. So it is instantaneous. When we say that it's in minutes, it is in minutes because it's the same front-end software that you're using for the on-premise server in our cloud for the enterprise. Um, the cost is minimal. Uh, it really depends on the environment. There's a tiered approach we take with our customers. And I'll be more than happy to answer those questions offline based on your requirements, because every every organization is different. Yes, but there is also the porting of numbers, which yes. could take weeks. So that's, that part's not going to be instantaneous. The porter number we take management, not ownership of, and that certainly could take a couple of weeks to get done. That's great. Absolutely. That's a great point, Larry, too. We take manage of that, management of that number only, right? Customer yeah. still maintains ownership of it. Um, 
So uh, how about how secure are these transfers? It's a question that just came in. These transfers. So uh, transfer, file transfers. Yeah, talk about both, right? That, that's we talk about transfers to the cloud as well as uh, file transfers. All right. Um, using our cloud solution uh, depends on the method, but using the enterprise solution using FastCom Suite still, your, your front end for the users never changes. They have no idea if they use an on premise or a host fax server. FastCom queue is now pointing to our hosted data centers. The queue makes an outbound connection through your firewall to our hosted data centers. It's outbound only through the firewall. You don't have to put any inbound holes in a firewall. And it's going over ports 443 and 6417. It's pushing out any outbound faxes and pulling down any received faxes through an encrypted uh, SSL channel. So it is very secure. That's an excellent question, Larry. And they just clarified, and of course, they were talking about the file transfers. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> but that was an excellent answer. Some really good points yeah. in there. Um, yeah, and, and file transfer, it's, uh, you know, I, I, the reason why people move to our file transfer solution is basically because they're, um, they can't, they're sending, a lot of people are, are still sending attachments over email, which is completely insecure. Um, but, you know, our back end is designed as a multi tier architecture, um, it's multi tenant. Um, we use a FIPS, we, we went through the FIPS 140 2 certification. So the cryptography is, is, has been vetted and um, yeah, it, it, everything is, is tracked and, and, um, and auditable. So yeah, we're that, that dot, you know, it's, it's really encrypted end to end, you know, from the each user, from one user to the next, it's, it's completely secure. What's the maximum number page or image limit for a single fax? Well, uh, the maximum number of pages really on the receiving side, there is no limit. Uh, you certainly can receive up to anything. We've had customers receive thousands of pages successfully, I might add. Um, transmitting faxes by default, I believe we set the limit to 10,000, 9,999 pages. I, I personally haven't heard of a fax going out that it's that large. Closest I've heard is about 2,400 pages again sent successfully yep and at 30 seconds to 45 seconds a page that's you're talking tens of hours right i mean yeah all day. a long time yeah. and, th and that's where some of our customers right have started to use the secure file transfer and transit and transit options for those much larger mm -hmm. faxes that are going out especially on the healthcare side yeah, yeah the um and yeah that, the one that one customer we're working with they um I think they're, they have a pretty regular cadence of faxes that are 1800 pages or more. And um, that's, that's one thing that, you know, what took hours and hours now is, you know, delivered in seconds. So pretty, pretty powerful. Is there any upper limit to how many numbers that can be ported to your cloud service? No. That is pretty simple and quick. That is no. true. No, there is no limit. Uh, about moving to the cloud, how reliable will the connection be? Uh, we have a new data center and they seem very stable. Uh, the connection, it's a, it, it comes down to your ISP connecting to our data center. So that's up to your ISP. As far as our connections out, uh, we're designed to be at least 99.95 uh, available, percent available. So it's extremely reliable connection. That's a good good answer, Larry. It's as reliable as your internet connection is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, On our if, side, they, extremely. if they give us more, you know, I can clarify that question maybe, you know, might be able to answer it better, but. Uh, we wait to see if that comes in. Um, what's your cloud availability rate? 99.95% uh, or higher. <laughs> Frankly, it's higher, right? It's, 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 it's nearly perfect over time. Um, that uh, we have an SLA that we, pr we produce as part of our agreements uh, for the customers, um, but we really haven't had to use it, which is an outstanding thing to be able to say and do, or not do, I guess, in that case. I guess, I guess in that case, in that case. Uh, what's, uh, the few, what's the few? What are uh, some what are of the things that you're working on? 
You hear the echo? I do. Thank you. So I'll ask that again. What are some of the things you're working on? What can we expect coming down the pike? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so I was focusing on the echo, and I'm like, oh, geez. Um, so actually, you know, that I, I love that question because, um, you know, we, we are doing actually quite a bit of uh, quite a number of things, um, especially around automation, uh, web-based agents, integrations, um, secure document delivery, right? So these are all kind of pieces that, that we think about because, you know, I, I always tell people, you know, fax, faxing in and out, that's actually pretty easy. Um, it's all the other pieces that can be complex and hard and, um, you know, always changes. So those are some of the things that, that we look at. Um, you know, if you've got a if you've got a really complex workflow, that's something that you know we're interested in. Um, a lot of our our products and solutions actually are, are built based on uh, you know customer requests and and uh, and um, the requirements. Um, but I think the thing that you're going to see a lot more, especially out of Bizcom, is you know just the further integration of our platform to include all types of delivery. Um, we already now support secure email. Um, file transfer, collaboration, synchronization, and, um, uh, you know, we're, we're actually just partnering with the company now that's going to do a lot of, you know, automation with uh, different protocols like FTP, SFTP. Um, so that, that's actually pretty uh, interesting as well. We'd like to email more than fax. Can this happen? And how secure is it? I'm not sure what the question means. Email more than fax? So um, they can use email to fax or outbound faxing. Uh, they can use our, our SFT and transit solution, which delivers an email with a link and that allows the recipient to download a file. Well, if I can take that question and maybe extrapolate and, and, and just think what they might be asking. Um, I, and, and, and it kind of is aligned with how we, how we're thinking about things, which is, you know, fax is, is our bread and butter and, you know, we're really, really good at it. But I think something that we, we do hear quite often is, you know, what's the next level, what's the next phase of this? Um, and, and that, and it's a migration, right? It's a migration strategy. It's a digital transformation strategy um, that a lot of companies are looking at. And fax is, is uh, you know because it's so embedded and so you know trusted, the the real issue or question is you know what's my risk in moving, and and what we what we're trying to do is minimize that risk completely by you know first of all putting that our file transfer and our other uh, secure messaging technologies on the same platform, and then at the same time you know letting you kind of wean yourself off of you know, facts, for example, and move over. And, you know, as you start to gain success in that and, and kind of get trusted, um, you can continue to, to move, you know, your processes over, some of your deliveries over. And I think that's one of the, the beauties of, you know, what we have, um, have built out this, this real robust platform. Um, it, it lets you kind of do both and then kind of move from one to the other over time and slowly. And, and like I said, that's the whole, the whole point is, you know, what's, how do we de-risk your, um, your environment and your situation? So I don't know if that was the answer, but it gave me a way to, a reason to, to talk about that. It was a good answer nonetheless. Uh, can a user access right be controlled to specific functions? Using our desktop or web client, yes. Uh, we have means to establish role access rights and we can limit what they can do and what faxes they can access. Does this come off? Go ahead, Antonetta. I just want to add, I think, I think we can get as granular as needed. Um, and some of our customers that are probably on the line right now today with these enterprises, every department has a very specific need. So based on that need, we can, we can really account for what the users need, the power users, so it can get as granular as you need. Does BISCOM offer training services? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we used to have, 
prior to uh, COVID, we used to have on-premise training. Uh, now we're doing everything through online. Uh, we recently uh, offered uh, virtual servers that users can log into and install the software and configure it uh, through our guidance of our instructors here at BizCom. And that training um, also can be really scaled to what the enterprise, the organization needs. So if it's admin specific training, then we scale it to admin only. If it's really training power users, then we'll formulate a training plan for those power users, as well as pre, you know, pre-sales. So, you know, we really dive in um, and, and do a lot of research and, and studying of the environment before we actually go in and do an implementation or make that recommendation. So it's pre and post where we do some, you know, research and those training. And that online training is coming up October 19th to the 21st. And feel Correct. free to register online or reach out to your account manager. Let, let, me, um, let me also add for training, um, which, you know, I, I talk to everyone who comes through our doors and goes comes to our training. The thing that they always leave with is this sense of, you know, I, now they can really um, leverage our solution even more. They, I don't think you, a lot of people realize all the power they have and all the capabilities that that's built into our system. And once, you know, Larry and some of the other trainers goes through it, they're, they're like, you know, their eyes are open, right? And uh, they can't wait to get back to their office to, to implement a lot of these things. So I know a lot of our customers are just scratching the surface. Training is really uh, that, that uh, you know, it's well worth it because you're going to, I mean, you're, you're investing in our solution and you want to really maximize it. So I think training can, can really help you get there and, and, and take full advantage of what we have. That's a good point, Bill. You get a lot of that uh, kind of kid in a candy shop type of view, wide eye. Wow, mm -hmm. I can do all this kind of stuff. It's pretty, okay. uh, it's pretty satisfying to see that from people. Yeah. Uh, a question to follow up on some of the SLA questions earlier. What are the elements of your, your SLA covers? Um, there's a few different things. The agreement, of course, covers multiple different things like uptime, maintenance windows, and all that kind of stuff. But the SLA itself covers the uh, availability of sending and receiving of faxes. So uh, another uh, follow-up question. Um, what kind of innovations has BISCOM led? Um, you know, that's... Uh... Uh, great question. I, I think about that a lot. And I, I think, you know, our, our claim to fame is, you know, we invented the very first enterprise network fax server back in 1986. And, um, and it just kind of, uh, you know, from there, we, we were able to continue to innovate and build out all this really cool um, ancillary applications. Like I said, you know, back, back then, faxing wasn't as easy as it is today. But, um, but you know, it's all the other applications that have been built around it that that have been really interesting. Um, you know, I go back to again. You know, one of the things that, that we look at that um, are really interesting. You know, we look at um, uh, you know automation. We look at uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. You know, how can how can we do more and and create more efficient processes? One of the things is definitely you know pulling in documents, scanning them, parsing them, trying to understand what you're trying to do, and then you know, help kind of route those uh, intelligently, right? That's, that's, I think, a really cool thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, one of the, uh, Antenna touched on the enterprise tax management with Antenna and, and Larry did. That, that's something that we just came out with um, not too long ago. And it really is, is such a powerful tool to manage these big environments. So if, you're, if your environment is, you know, more than two or three servers and more than 48, 24 or 48 ports, this is, this tool really lets you understand what's going on and, and prevents you from getting into trouble, right? Because you can kind of anticipate and, and, and head that off um, without getting into, into real trouble. So that's, you know, it's one of the most, um, I think, innovative things that we've done in the recent past. And it's just such a huge uh, uh, benefit to, to customers. I think one of the problems, though, is that not enough people, not enough people know about it. So um, if, if you are interested in, in seeing it, you know, get in touch with us. We can, uh, we can definitely show you the, the tool. So we've got a, flurry, so we got a yeah. flurry of questions coming in here at the end. So we're going to try to 
uh, not cut you guys off, but try to get a few more of them in if we can. Well, John, well, I mean, also we can, we'll obviously respond to all the questions. Yep. We're uh, definitely offline gonna if we have to, but. Yeah, we're definitely going to respond to them offline. There's a few easy ones coming in here, I think. Is VAR or integrator a must have for support to Biscom mission? It's an interesting one because we hear that about some of our competitors. So are they required to either purchase or do support through a VAR? No. We do direct sales, direct support. I think it depends, right? So some of our uh, VARs and system integrators, they, they do the kind of first level support, second, first and second level. And that, but um, some of them uh, prefer to have us do it directly. So, and, and I think the, I think the customer also has their own can can choose. But um, yeah, exactly. Kind of a mix. And to expand on that, I think it's based on what level. So our gold partners, they do all first level support, and then anything below that, um, we try to take that on because we really have a standard in support for our customers. So we want to make sure that anyone that is working and partnering with BizCom has the same standard of, of support. We have an integration with Epic. Uh, we currently do not use the desktop client. Would that be able to be used to show users the fax logs and more insights? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it'll show them fax activity. Uh, it'll show you all your sent faxes. It'll show you the status of those faxes and you could very easily resend any of those faxes. Yeah, and I think to the, the, our desktop app is actually is important because from Epic standpoint, it's, it's pretty, there's not a whole lot you can do, right? Um, so the real power of our integration with Epic really lies in our application and that's how I think people really can leverage all that metadata. So that's uh, all the time we have questions today as we run to close to the end of the hour. We still have some more that are popping in and that's awesome. As Bill mentioned, we'll definitely get you out answers to all your questions. Uh, follow up on one of the, the last questions of all we talked about with support is, we do have award-winning support. So our support team has won some awards over the past few years that recognize uh, what they've done and, and how successful they've been at helping our customers. Um, so Bill, do you have any final thoughts for us? Uh, well, no, I just wanted to thank, you know, all of our attendees. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, I also want to thank the, you know, our panelists, Antonetta, Larry, John, um, you know, great, great job, Mary, for putting this all together. And, uh, and I just wanted to also, um, first of all, obviously, uh, I think John mentioned it, but the recording is going to be available to you um, uh, later if you want to go watch this again, um, or send it off to someone you want to, to, to watch. And we also have an ebook coming up that uh, we're just kind of putting the final touches on. And it's called Secure Healthcare Information Exchange, A Path to Digital Transformation. And we've done, we did this really interesting survey, which um, shows some of the trends and, uh, you know, in healthcare and what people think about how they, you know, what they want to do with their data. Um, so it's pretty interesting, you know, look for it. We're, we're going to send this out when it comes out to all the um, registered uh, attendees. I want to thank the panel for sharing all their expertise um, with us, our marketing team for helping us set it up, Mary and Kim and Han Chu, uh, especially. And um, as we said, if we didn't get a chance to answer your question today, someone will reach out over the next couple of days to get you an answer. But anytime you want to talk to us, uh, give your account manager a call, uh, call us directly. We love talking to customers. We're one of the few companies that doesn't uh, hide their phone number on their website or email us at uh, info at Thank you once again and have a great day.